in a similar fashion I would like you to prepare sample B and another capillary tube containing your unknown compound. Now the next thing you want to do is prepare the mixture of A and B. To prepare the mixture of A and B and to see, really see the effect of mixing two compounds together and see what happens to their melting points, it is best that you take these two compounds A and B in almost one to one proportion. Does not mean you have to sit down and weigh these two compounds, but when you take a tip full of A what I would like you to do is take approximately the same amount of B. So, we will mix these two compounds and grind them together. Fold the paper over. Just like we prepared sample A, grind the mixture of A and B that we took into a fine powder, take another capillary tube and fill it with this mixture of A and B and that capillary tube will go here where we have labeled A plus B. So, you will have four capillary tubes ready to go into the Hoover apparatus to determine the melting point. First one would be A second would be the capillary tube containing B, third one would have the mixture of A and B and the fourth capillary will contain your unknown compound. And when you take these four to the Hoover apparatus and determine the melting point, you will see what happens when compounds A and B which have similar melting points, when they are mixed together what would happen to the melting point of this mixture. You will also get a rough idea of the melting point of your unknown compound. That finishes the first part of this experiment. From the first part of the experiment, you got a rough idea about the melting point of your unknown compound. From your table of physical constants, you will notice that there will be two compounds which have similar melting points to that of your unknown compound. Those two possibilities I have labeled them as P1 and P2 on this piece of paper. You notice that I have unknown P1 that is possibility 1, possibility 2 unknown plus possibility 1 and unknown plus possibility 2. Remember that we are trying to determine the identification of this unknown compound by mixed melting point method. So, what we are going to do is fill a capillary tube with this unknown and you will have a second capillary tube in which you will take the possibility 1 compound which had similar melting point to that of your unknown and the third capillary will have possibility 2 which again had melting point close to that of your unknown compound and the fourth capillary will contain the mixture of your unknown and possibility 1. So, take about 1 to 1 ratio of your unknown and possibility 1, grind it into a fine powder and fill the fourth capillary with this mixture of unknown plus possibility 1. 
the fifth capillary tube will contain a mixture of unknown and possibility too prepared in the similar fashion that you prepared the mixture of unknown plus possibility 1. So, what will happen to the melting point of our unknown compound when mixed with possibility 1 and possibility 2? Your unknown can be one of these two only. It could be possibility 1 or possibility 2. So, when you determine the melting point of unknown plus P1, if the melting point stays unchanged, then you would think that your unknown is possibility 1. But to confirm that, you will also compare it to the melting point of unknown plus possibility 2. If our unknown is indeed possibility 1, the mixture of unknown plus possibility 2 should give a melting point which is both depressed and broadened in the range. If that happens, then we can confirm that our unknown is indeed possibility 1. So, it could also be possibility 2 in which case the mixture of unknown plus possibility 2 will give the same melting point as our unknown and the mixture of unknown plus possibility 1 will give a different melting point which would be depressed and the range of which will be broadened. So, that completes today's experiment and now I am going to show you how to use the Hoover apparatus to determine the melting point.